Hello Fisher Unitech community, my name is Amanda and today we'll be going over customizing tools and tool cribs in SolidWorks CAM. Today we'll take a look at customizing tools, creating and customizing tool cribs, and we'll also be creating new tools from solid geometry. Let's get started. Let's make a new custom tool crib. We'll start off by going into our technology database. We can do this by going to our SOLIDWORKS CAM tab and choosing technology database. Or we can go to our tools, SOLIDWORKS CAM, technology database. Whichever way you choose to get there, you will be presented with a new window. This is the technology database. This is where all the behind the scenes magic happens. If you need to customize something in SOLIDWORKS CAM, just open the technology database. You can customize and add machines, create or change strategies, or what we're here for today, which is to create a custom tool crib. One other thing about the technology database, some people call it the tech DB. So I'd write that down if you want to get hip with the lingo and impress your friends. Now, custom tool cribs. I'm going to create mine for the mill, but please know that you can follow the same procedure to make a custom tool crib for your lathe as well. Back in mill, I'll set my units to inches. Then, I'll go under tool cribs and double click tool crib one. You'll notice that this is just an empty tool crib. In here, I have several options to choose from. I can choose another tool crib to work on, I can delete, edit, or copy an existing tool crib, or I can create a new tool crib. I will choose new and enter a new name for my tool crib. You can choose a name that makes sense in your shop, like the machine name that you will use. I will keep my total stations set to 20 but you can set it to the number of stations that you require. To save this tool crib, I must choose the black check mark here. One other word about setting the number of stations. Should you choose to add more tools to a tool crib than there are stations, SOLIDWORKS CAM will not allow you to add that tool. This tool crib is set to have five stations, and I already have five tools. If I try to add a sixth, I get a message letting me know that there are no empty stations left for another tool. Let's go back into the tool crib that we just created and add some tools. Any button in the top portion of this window will affect entire tool cribs, as we saw before. Any button in the right hand window will affect individual tools. Let's add a 1 16th inch 4 flute end mill to our tool crib. We can delete tools, copy tools, and save edits made to tool parameters in this right hand window. I am going to keep this tool with everything being the same. Once I have chosen my tool and saved any edits made to the tool's parameters, I will choose Select. And the tool will now appear in my tool crib. Now I can choose to use this tool crib to machine my part. Now, here is where I see customers get into trouble. That's right, you know who you are. You can also edit your tools and tool cribs outside of the technology database. I can add another tool to this tool crib. Let's just say an eighth inch end mill. And the tool populates. And we can see it over here. Now let's go to a new part. edit the definition of our tool crib, and choose our test tool crib. We see that the eighth inch end mill that we just added did not populate in this part. 
That's because we did not save it to the technology database. If you do not save your custom tools or tool cribs back to the technology database, then those tools or that configuration of tool crib will only live within that part and not be accessible in other files. So if I right click on test tool crib and choose save tool crib to tech DB and choose save, now this tool crib and the tool that I just added is now saved to the test tool crib in the technology database. Let's go back to my other part, right click and choose edit definition, select test tool crib and hit the select button. Now you can see that that eighth inch end mill has populated. The final topic I wanted to cover today is creating your own custom tool. Let's do it. Our custom tool will be created from a Revolve part. I have opened a new part in SolidWorks and created this sketch. Your tool can be whatever shape you need it to be. It is highly recommended that you add a center line and start from the origin. Be sure that you have created a closed sketch and we recommend that you fully define as well. After I created my sketch, I used a revolve feature to create the solid. My fellow woodworkers out there will recognize this bit as a Roman OG. Before we go any further, we need to save our part. I've already saved mine as Roman OG, but if you haven't, go to File, Save, or Save As, and save your part. Remember where you put your part as well as we will need to reference this later on. Once we have the solid model of our tool created, we need to tell SolidWorks CAM to recognize it as a tool. To do this, I'll go to my SolidWorks CAM tab, choose the double chevron on the right hand side, and choose user defined tool slash holder. Keep in mind, if your screen is wide enough, you may have this button on your SolidWorks CAM tab without having to choose the double chevron. You can also go to Tools, SolidWorks CAM, User Defined Tools and Holders. In here, we can see a preview of our tool and we can choose which type of tool we would like to create. In this case, we would like to create a mill tool or .mt, but we could also create mill holders and turning inserts for your lathe. I will also be able to choose the place where I would like this to be saved. This file is different from the file that we saved before, but it will use the same name. I will choose browse and I'm happy with where my tool is saved. And I'll click OK. Now this tool is saved as an MT file or a mill tool file and we can reference it in our technology database. Let's now open our technology database by going to our SolidWorks CAM tab and choosing technology database. In the technology database, I will go to mill tooling, scroll down, and choose user defined tools. There is a standard list of tools that comes preloaded, and it includes lollipop cutters for undercutting and slitting saws. To create a new custom tool, in this case, our Roman OG, we'll copy an existing tool. and then change the specifications from there. The copy tool will end up at the bottom of the list. I'll call my tool Roman OG. But you should put whatever is best for your shop, like the part number or order number for the custom tool you are using. For the designation, you can also put in whatever makes sense in your shop. I will just say Roman OG. I can then put in other specifications about my cutter tool, such as the cutter diameter, the shank diameter, 
the tip length, overall length, flute length, protrusion from the holder, shoulder length, tip offset depending on the tool you're using, the hand of cut, number of flutes, and we can also choose what kind of material our tool is made out of. We could choose between carbide and high-speed steel. We can also leave a comment if we wish. For tool name and path, we will select the mill tool that we just created. We'll just have to browse to it. When we reference this file, SolidWorks Cam will now generate the tool shape for simulation when we cut the part. Now we can define any default parameters that we want associated with this tool. I can choose the type of material this tool will be used with, such as aluminum alloys. I can then specify the feeds and speeds and depth of cut for each material. I will turn off coolant for my example. We will then hit save to save our tool and parameters. Our tool name has now changed to Roman OG. Now we can reference this tool when creating programs for our parts. I will now go into a blank part to show you. I'll double click machine, choose add tool, and in the drop down menu I'll choose user defined tool. I will choose our Roman OG, and you can see the simulation of our tool on the screen. That about wraps up our lesson on tools and tool cribs. I hope we've made you all happy campers. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. See you next time.